Thank you all for joining us tonight. I'm Paul Herring, Vice Chancellor for University Advancement. It's my great privilege to welcome you to the 29th Annual University of Missouri St. Louis Founders Celebration. Normally at this time, I would be able to look across a ballroom filled with our wonderful colleagues and friends, students, alumni, and supporters. I would see the faces of those of you who mean so much to this wonderful institution. But like everyone else, we had to cancel plans for our fancy night out. Tonight we're staying at home and streaming to you from campus. Now listen, no complaints. The Two Hill Performing Arts Center is a beautiful place to be. But we knew that under no circumstances or location could we replicate the warmth and joy of the usual Founders event. It couldn't possibly be the same, and we didn't even try. Well, maybe we tried a little. We knew we would miss your faces and that you would want to be here as much as possible. I think we've all recently experienced the kind of dramatic shift in life that makes you appreciate the folks around you more than ever. That's why we wanted to continue with this event in any format. Of course, we miss the smiles and handshakes. But sharing the silver linings we've experienced, hearing the stories about how UMSL transforms lives, and how our community is so interwoven that you come to our aid when asked, that's why we are here with you. Among those who support us, especially tonight, is our presenting sponsor, Edward Jones. Without this organization, this evening could not be possible. We could not be more grateful for your generosity and support, which of course extends well beyond tonight's celebration. Edward Jones is one of UMSL's most valued partners. We thank you. So thank you again for joining us, whether you are watching online, here in the audience, or both. You're the reason we get together to celebrate the inspiring UMSL community. And never have I been more inspired than to see the ways this community has responded in the last many months. I hear so many stories of resilience through this uncertain time. The way our faculty, staff, and students handled the transition to remote learning and returning to the fall semester was truly commendable. I'm sure Chancellor Soblick will speak more to this in her address. As you know, tonight's event theme is UMSL students succeed virtually anywhere. We are proud to tell you about just some of the ways UMSL students braved such rapid upheaval and made the most of their situations. I look forward to sharing a video later this evening that illustrates how resilient UMSL students are. In my part of the world, my team also immediately set to work, all hands on deck. When we heard that the Triton Emergency Fund was being overwhelmed with calls for assistance, almost every other project was put on hold. The Triton Emergency Fund provides relief for students with extreme financial hardships, allowing them to pay for essentials like utilities and rent. We put out an immediate call to help. We asked and you responded. You will all be thrilled to know that you came through for us to the tune of $65,000. We couldn't be more grateful you responded because you know what we know, that UMSL students go on to be the best of St. Louis. UMSL students become business leaders, celebrated teachers, valued nurses, and so many other professionals who make up the backbone of the region's workforce. You know that UMSL students are working towards their degree to improve their lives and the lives of their families. You know that UMSL students may not come from means, but they have drive and fortitude. What you may not know is that our chancellor, Dr. Kristen Sobolik, had a similar start. She, like many of our students, was a first-generation Pell Grant student who attended the University of Iowa and majored in biology. To make ends meet, she worked two jobs, one in the dish room of the residence hall cafeteria, the other in the x-ray library of the university hospital. She persisted and went on to earn an MA 
and Ph.D. in anthropology. From there, she landed a tenure-track position at the University of Maine, which launched her nearly 30-year career in academia. She was appointed as UMSL's provost and vice chancellor in May 2017, advancing to executive vice chancellor one year later, and then interim chancellor. She was appointed the eighth chancellor of UMSL in April of this year. Her contributions and commitments to this university in such a short time have been tremendous and inspiring as we carry out our mission to transform lives. It is my great privilege to introduce Chancellor Kristen Sobolik. Thank you, Paul, and thank you to everyone for joining us for our annual Founder Celebration. Like Paul, I too wish that you were celebrating the founding of our fantastic university together in person. But it is wonderful that we can use technology to remain connected and come together to share our gratitude for the students, faculty, staff, alumni, donors, and friends who define this university. Tonight's celebration is appropriately dedicated in memory of Wayne Good, who is widely considered to be the father of the University of Missouri-St. Louis. Year after year, Wayne would join us for our Founders Celebration to share in our successes as a university and those of our community. Sadly, Wayne passed away earlier this month after a hard-fought battle with leukemia at age 83. He is survived by his wife of 57 years, Jane, their two children, grandchildren, as well as two sisters, and our hearts share in their loss and in their grief. Wayne leaves behind a tremendous legacy, one that enabled to the founding of UMSL as Eastern Missouri's only four-year public research university. And there is no more appropriate time than during our Founders Celebration to reflect on our humble beginnings and Wayne's important role in our university's founding. Wayne grew up here and attended public schools in Normandy before enrolling at the University of Missouri-Columbia, where he earned a degree in finance and banking. Upon graduation, he returned to St. Louis, and just three years later, in 1962, he was elected to the Missouri House of Representatives. He proudly served in the House representing North St. Louis County for 11 consecutive terms before being elected to represent the region in the Missouri State Senate. Throughout his 42 years of public service, it was perhaps his freshman year as a legislator when he made his most important and lasting impact on the St. Louis region. But to know that story is to take a step back and understand the series of events that led to UMSL's founding in 1963. It all began in 1957 when the Normandy School District and citizens of the district passed a bond issue to purchase the former Belle Reve Country Club in North St. Louis County. Their goal, led in large part by longtime Superintendent Ward E. Barnes, was to utilize the site to establish a junior college to bring educational opportunities to St. Louis area residents who could not afford the region's private universities or afford to enroll at public institutions outside of the region. After passing the bond, the school board established what became known as the Committee of 28, a collection of individuals tasked with establishing a plan to launch a junior college to serve the region. Around the same time, the University of Missouri, headed by President Elmer Ellis, was exploring the possibility of developing four-year campuses in both Kansas City and St. Louis. Barnes and Ellis happened to be close friends, and as their work progressed, they began to align their mutual goals to bring high-quality, affordable public higher education to St. Louis. 
An initial deal was struck for the University of Missouri to provide courses and accreditation for the two-year college, which led to the opening of the Normandy Residence Center in 1959. The effort was a success, but as enrollment grew, the school district was not in a position to expand operations. So plans shifted and another deal was struck, one that looked to the future to establish a four-year public university for St. Louis. Through the deal, Normandy would transfer ownership of the 128-acre property for a nominal fee to the university to establish the University of Missouri-St. Louis in Belle Reve. There was just one problem. The property deal was voted down by the Missouri Supreme Court after six months of debate as state laws at the time mandated that public school districts solicit competitive bids when selling excess property. This meant that the university long sought by residents could not be guaranteed. That is when Wayne Good stepped in. In January of 1963, shortly upon entering his first year in politics, he introduced House Bill 153. This 78-word piece of legislation sought to change state law to make the proposed land transfer legal. Working across political parties, Wayne passionately advocated for the need to bring an affordable public university to Missouri's most populous region. His efforts were well received with the House passing the bill by a landslide and the Senate giving unanimous approval. By April, Governor John Dalton signed the legislation into law. In a matter of months, Wayne changed the trajectory of public education in our region and led to the founding and dedication of the University of Missouri-St. Louis in September 1963. When asked to share his proudest accomplishment throughout his four decades in office, Wayne said, obviously being connected with the start of the University of Missouri-St. Louis. I'm very proud of that but I can't claim that totally as mine because I came into it as a kind of the right person at the right time in the right place. I would agree, it was the right time, it was the right place, and Wayne was the right person to marshal the legislation necessary to begin a collaboration and long shared vision for the St. Louis region and Missouri as a whole to fruition. UMSL was born from a need, a need to establish a top-tier public research university to serve the state's largest, most diverse, and economically important region. From its founding in 1963, with an enrollment of just 672 students, we have now awarded nearly 119,000 degrees to more than 105,000 alumni. UMSL is a success story, and no institution does more to educate and graduate students from St. Louis who stay in St. Louis. In fact, 73% of our alumni remain in the region to live and work. UMSL graduates lead the region's workforce in business, education, healthcare, government, nonprofit agencies, and on and on. But that is not the only area in which UMSL excels. U.S. News recently released its annual Best Colleges Rankings, and I am proud to share that UMSL remains a Tier 1 research university and received its highest ever total score, rising 14 spots to rank number 126 among all public universities nationally. Last year, I reported that U.S. News included UMSL in its inaugural Top Performers for Social Mobility, which measures how well universities graduate Pell-eligible students, and I am proud to share that UMSL remains among the nation's top performers in this year's annual rankings. And Times Higher Education recently named UMSL 52nd in the world on its list of best universities for reducing inequalities. 
These rankings are particularly important given the dem demographics of the students we serve. The medium family income of our students is $34,000. 44% of our students are first generation. 41% are Pell eligible. 36% are adult learners. 30% are underrepresented minorities. And 80%, 80% rely on financial aid to support their education. Outcomes matter. And UMSL is among elite company in respect to student success outcomes. We boast a first year retention rate of more than 80%. And our six year graduation rate leads amongst our peer institutions across the entire nation. This was recognized in a New York Times study which found that UMSL's six year graduation rate is five percentage points higher than expected given the rates at universities with similar student demographics. As Paul said, even during this challenging time, facing a pandemic and economic uncertainty, our students have shown tremendous resilience. They are driven, they are determined, and they are dedicated to earning their degrees, thereby transforming their lives, that of their families, and that of our entire region. UMSL was already ranked number one in Missouri for our online bachelor's programs when we had to abruptly transition to remote learning in the spring due to the pandemic. That gave us a head start, but I'll say that this transition was no small task. Our faculty acted quickly to transition all courses to fully online or remote formats, allowing our students to successfully finish the semester. With many graduating on time and moving on to the next stage of their careers and lives. Many others continued to take fully online courses during the summer session, where we experienced a 6% increase in credit hours. Throughout this time, we focused on supporting measures to lessen the impact on our students. Among those, as Paul mentioned, we focused fundraising efforts on the Triton Emergency Fund to give immediate support to our students. In addition, UMSL was the first university in the state, the first university in the state, to fully distribute our allotment of CARES Act emergency grants, totaling $2.9 million in student support. When considering the start of the fall semester, we knew that there were no easy answers, no easy solutions but UMSL developed a reasoned blueprint to provide our students with the best education possible given the constraints brought about by the pandemic. Classes began August 24th with more than 60% of our courses offered fully online with the remainder being offered in blended formats. This shift best allowed for a safe return to in-person instruction and gave our students an opportunity to move forward in their degree attainment. As tonight's theme indicates, our students can and do succeed virtually anywhere. I've been in awe of how our entire university community continues to model and follow the health and safety measures required to not only have a safe start to our semester, but that we continue to stay safe. UMSL is an institution of opportunity one that provides a world-class education while giving students the tools and support they need to succeed in their educational and career paths. The education they receive here is foundational as they go out to create lasting change in the world. As Wayne Good said, as I look back on introducing legislation to create UMSL 50 years ago, I never imagined I'd still be this involved with the university. I'm so happy to have been a part of this. Wayne, we are grateful that you have been a part of UMSL's founding and continued to be involved in our rise to greatness.
and we applaud and give thanks to the many other leaders and visionaries like Ward Barnes, Elmer Ellis, and members of the Committee of 28, including James Westbury, who was named superintendent of the Normandy School District in 1977 all of whom championed and invested in this university's founding and its future. It took countless individuals working in concert. It took collaboration and it took a shared vision. Tonight, we celebrate that vision. We celebrate our founding and look to each of you in collaboration to advocate, support and invest in the future of our university, UMSL, the University of Missouri for St. Louis. Good evening, everyone. My name is Laura Ellenhorn, and I am the principal responsible for philanthropy and community engagement at Edward Jones. As a purpose-driven organization, we strive to make a meaningful and positive impact in the lives of our clients, colleagues, and communities. And with more than 500 UMSL alumni serving at Edward Jones today, we are proud to serve as the presenting sponsor for this evening's program. I would also like to congratulate Laura and Norm Eaker on the distinction of receiving the E. Desmond and Mary Ann Lee Medal for Philanthropy. It really is no surprise. I've spent much of my Edward Jones career working with and learning from Norm Eaker and I've witnessed many organizations across our region strengthened by their service, knowledge, and dedication, and the countless lives meaningfully changed because of Laura and Norm's genuine interest in helping people do and be their best. Norm and Laura both have always led by example in everything that they put their minds to, encouraging others to do their part and give until it feels really great. Sir Winston Churchill once said, we make a living by what we get. We make a life by what we give. Laura and Norman, oh, what a life you've made for all of us. On the behalf of Ever Jones and all of the partners and the associates at Ever Jones, congratulations. Thanks again to Edward Jones. You all know this is true. There are many ways to measure the value of a degree from UMSL. The quality education, the connection with faculty, the network of fellow classmates and alumni, the opportunities UMSL opens for its students are truly transformative. There are also many ways to measure the impact of an UMSL graduate. Consider this year's class of distinguished alumni alone. A chemist whose research affects an untold number of folks, a STEM teacher educating hearts and minds, business owners who create jobs in the St. Louis area, not to mention their philanthropic efforts, that create more of a positive ripple effect. As Associate Vice Chancellor of Alumni Engagement and Annual Giving, Jennifer Jessick Tausig has the honor of virtually introducing this year's class of distinguished alumni. Good evening, everyone. Like Paul, I miss looking out over the crowd to see the faces of so many UMSL alumni and friends. But there is opportunity in the pandemic as well. I wanna give a shout out to our alumni in the DC area who are with us tonight, virtually of course, and to others living outside of St. Louis who might not have been able to be with us in person, but because of the current conditions are here with us tonight. We are separate, but together like never before. Before I introduce this year's class of distinguished alumni, I'd like to recognize all of our distinguished alumni from years past. Don't worry, I'm not gonna read all 160 plus names. This year, the Alumni Association created a new recognition program, the Trident Awards, to be presented annually in three categories, distinguished alumni, gold, excellence and leadership, silver, and outstanding volunteerism, bronze, to recognize individuals who enhance alumni engagement and help the university meet its mission of excellence in education, impactful research, and community service. 
all past Distinguished Alumni Award recipients are the first to receive the gold award, which is represented as a gold trident pen to wear proudly at UMSL events on campus or otherwise. Gold pens were mailed to Distinguished Alumni earlier this month, and our hope is that you're at home right now wearing it while watching us. And now it is my honor on behalf of the UMSL Alumni Association to introduce the 2020 class of distinguished alumni. James Brennan. Jim is the president and owner of McKelvey Homes, the fourth largest builder in the St. Louis area and the oldest. He earned a bachelor's in business administration from UMSL in 1974 and was licensed as a CPA the same year. In 1977, he left the public accounting field and joined Sphereder Corporation as a controller. He became the CFO of Taylor Morley Simon Homes in 1985 and later became the company's COO. In 2001, he purchased McKelvey Homes. Jim is an authority on home building in the region, often quoted by local media and a frequent speaker on the topic. He's devoted to strengthening the industry and is a past president of the Home Builders Association of St. Louis and Eastern Missouri, as well as a member of its Hall of Fame for Excellence and Achievement. He's also devoted to serving his community through volunteer work. He served on the board of Cardinal Glennon Children's Hospital for 30 years and was president of the Cardinal Glennon Foundation Board of Governors and the Home Builders Charitable Foundation. Congratulations, Jim. Stan Freerichs. Stan is retired as the owner and president of S.A. Freerichs & Associates, a multi-state insurance brokerage firm. He earned a master's in business administration from UMSL in 1992. Over the course of his 43-year career, Stan worked as an account executive, dealing directly with the insurance buying public, and later owning his own firm as a managing general agent, underwriting and placing coverage on behalf of retail insurance brokers with specialty insurance companies. He placed business with over 20 insurance companies and also with certain underwriters at Lloyd's of London. In addition to recognition in the Wall Street Journal and who's who in colleges and universities, Stan has also received the Dean's Medal from the UMSL College of Business and the E. Desmond and Mary Ann Lee Medal of Philanthropy. Stan has immersed himself in the support of UMSL in general and specifically the College of Business. He has been active in many professional associations, including the Missouri Surplus Lines Association and the Capital Indemnity Agency Advisory Council. He is also active in the St. Louis Masters Swimming Organization and the Cornell Water Polo Club. Congratulations, Stan. Terry Freerichs. Terry is a licensed professional counselor in private practice and the CFO and Executive Director Emeritus, retired head coach of the Clayton Shaw Park swimming team. She earned a Bachelor's of Arts degree with a major in history in 1977 and a Master's degree in education from UMSL in 1979. A lifelong competitive swimmer herself, Terry has long been interested in the psychology of winning and sharing that information with other competitive swimmers. Her dissertation for her PhD in counseling from St. Louis University was published in 1989, The Effect of Jungian Psychological Type, Birth Order, and Gender on Distance, Specialty, and Achievement Status Among Adolescents and College Swimmers. In addition to being an All-American Master Swimmer, Terry was inducted into the Ozark Swimming Hall of Fame in 2008, holds the national and American record for age group and master's swimming, and received the American Swimming Coaches Association Award of Excellence in both 1987 and 1989. She too has immersed herself in the support of UMSL, including her current service on the Chancellor's Council, the College of Arts and Sciences Leadership Council, the Nursing Lab Campaign, and the Alumni Finance Committee. Along with her husband, Stan, Terry is often seen at UMSL athletic events, sporting their UMSL gear and cheering on the Tritons. Way to go, Terry. Stephen Kaloje. Stephen is an Associate Research Fellow in Biotherapeutic Pharmaceutical Sciences at Pfizer. He earned a bachelor's in chemistry from UMSL in 1987 and completed his PhD at the university in 1992. After graduating, he joined Washington University School of Medicine as an NIH postdoctoral training grant recipient. 
His career took him to Cregan, then Monsanto. He worked at Pfizer for several years before advancing to his current role as a senior researcher in 2010. Stephen has been issued 16 patents, holds a prolific publication and presentation record, and has lectured around the world, including at MIT and University College London, where he's a visiting staff member. He excels at teaching and leading large groups of scientists and researchers. He's also passionate about collaboration, lends his time and expertise to UMSL's Department of Chemistry, which has led to peer-reviewed publications and substantial funding for the Demchenko Lab. Congratulations, Steve. Elizabeth Peterson. Elizabeth is a science educator and STEM facilitator for Washington University in St. Louis. She graduated from UMSL in 1980 with a bachelor's in biology and again in 1996 with a master's of education in curriculum and instruction. Following graduation, she worked at Ladue School District for 18 years before joining Washington University, where she was a Park Teaching Fellow, a Darwin Kirk Fellow, a Noyce Fellow, and many other roles. Her volunteer work includes serving on the Science Teachers of Missouri Board, the Audubon Center at Riverlands Advisory Board, the National Science Teachers Association Board, the Science Scope Magazine Board, and more. She's the recipient of the St. Louis Educational Equity Award and the Missouri Department of Natural Resources Stream Team Teacher of the Year Award. Elizabeth is nationally recognized as a curriculum writer and a STEM facilitator and is sought out speaker on teaching, gender and racial equity in the classroom and environmental opportunities. She stresses that encouraging students to pursue STEM careers can help close the income and achievement gaps. Congratulations, Liz. Please join me in congratulating these five distinguished UMSL alumni. And when we are back together in person again, look for their gold trident pins. We spoke to this year's honorees about their connections with UMSL. Let's hear what they had to say. I chose UMSL because I really uh, did not have a great deal of choices. Uh, my dad was a mailman, I was the second oldest of eight, and it was either UMSL or junior college. And I really felt I could not afford St. Louis University. Uh, going away to school really wasn't an option for me uh, at the time, and uh, uh, boy was I lucky. UMSL was really memorable in the fact that it was a no-nonsense school. Uh, I worked full-time, went to school full-time, First couple semesters I was during the day, but uh, I also joined the post office. And as a mailman, it's kind of hard to work at night. And so I went to evening college. And what I found is that the professors were great. Many times they were uh, practical business people. And when I got into the business school, uh, I, I, my grades improved. I really took an interest in it. And uh, I got a really good education. So what I found is that the professors at UMSO really took a personal interest in, in my career. And uh, I'm sure they did that with many others because there's so many successful people that have come through UMSO, especially in the business school. When, when Jennifer called me to tell me that I was going to be recognized as a distinguished alumni, uh, I'm in very, very good company. Uh, I've got so many friends that have been very successful that are UMSO grads. And, to, to hear that I'm going to be honored, uh, it, it, uh, it, was, it was very special. I chose UMSL uh, for my graduate degree uh, for a number of different reasons. Uh, my undergraduate degree was at Cornell University where I graduated with a degree in history and economics. When I graduated, by the time I had reached my senior year, I had pretty much decided that my goal was to go to business school. And it made a lot of sense for me that with a background in history, that if I was gonna start a business, I really needed a, a good core business education. And I knew that UMSL was nationally ranked. It had a program that was flexible to my business. And it just made perfect sense that UMSL would be my choice to get my MBA. Well, what UMSL means to me 
uh, is the future of St. Louis. You know, as we, you know, look at, at what UMSL has contributed to the, to the local area in terms of 78,000 graduates that have been everything from the mayor of the city to county supervisors to school superintendents uh, to the lead councils of major law firms to CEOs. It's incredible uh, the reach that UMSL grads have within our community. It's so important to us to uh, provide you know, scholarships and help and support uh, to the people, to the undergraduates and graduate students that come here to UMSL, which is one of the reasons why Terry and I are so supportive of this school. We feel that it, it contributes so much to the quality of life in this region that would not be available were it not for UMSL. UMSL is St. Louis, and St. Louis is UMSL. It creates opportunities for individuals to actualize their potential. And it does so in an environment that is supporting, nurturing, and challenging. Chancellor Tuhill, you know, she's been so extremely important in my life. The most outstanding role model and mentor I think that I have ever had. She um, has included me in many things. She put me up for a Rhodes Scholar. She facilitated my getting a position with the Military Records Center, where I was an archivist for the federal government. And recently, she included me in a project that she is doing for the Missouri Historical Society, collecting information about women's stories through life as their rules and their options change. So when I think about her, which I do often, I realize that she is always in my mind because of all that she taught me, and she is always in my heart for all that she gave me. Well, I think the most remarkable thing about UMSL is that it followed me in my path as I made changing decisions, and it helped me prepare for those new decisions I was making. And I am very UMSL proud. But it's also important to me that UMSL be proud of me. The work I did here at UMSL prepared me for my career because it was all laboratory based. I learned all the very practical aspects uh, from working with Dr. Winter in the lab and how to apply those then to my, to my current work. As a distinguished alum, um, UMSL was a place I can always come back to and uh, talk to faculty members. I have recently had several research um, proposals with several faculty members through my, uh, my job at Pfizer. And so I had the opportunity to, to visit their labs, get to know their students, and uh, work through some research problems together. So uh, UMSL has meant just a, a, my alma mater. Right? You always come back. I can come back to the chemistry colloquium where they have seminars on a weekly basis when the topics are of interest. Um, I just always see it as a, a wonderful resource to be able to tap into when, when I need to learn something new about uh, the chemistry that we're doing at, at Pfizer. I think one thing about um, UMSL that really makes it different is the uh, the fact that the faculty are so collaborative and um, they design research programs together with one another. And it's not as if they're in a competition, uh, but they're, they're working together to progress science. I think the, the collaborative nature of the, the chemistry faculty here at UMSL makes, makes them very unique over other universities. UMSL is for people, about people, and it's helping people be the best people they can possibly be. It means, here, we're gonna give you all the ingredients, now you go out and you do it. it make a difference. You know, the world, as I said before, the world needs you. And the education here, I mean, all of my friends, you know, became doctors and lawyers and dentists and, I mean, all real professionals. You know, as a teacher, I feel like I'm representing all the teachers out there that UMSL is recognizing 
sparked the teacher in me, and I feel like I can honor all the other teachers out there because I feel like teachers are miracle workers, you know? And right now, what they're being asked to do is just almost unbelievable. It's really a powerful feeling when you know you did the work and you're prepared to go out there and, and teach and do a good job, and UMSL, totally did that and Dr. Granger and all the education staff and every single professor I had um, helped me be the very best I could be. It was just absolutely fabulous. I mean they really stretched you beyond what you thought was possible and they really want you to go out in the world and do good. You know there's that expectation that hey the world needs you get your acting gear and get out there and solve these problems. Thank you, Jennifer, and congratulations again to all of you. I am so honored to be here to celebrate this year's class of distinguished alumni. They are among many incredible UMSL student success stories. As you heard, many of them started their education here when they were already working at a full-time job, or they were looking to bolster the success of their new business. Maybe they didn't come from great means or the opportunities others might enjoy, but they looked around, weighed their options, and chose UMSL. This institution helped shape their futures, and now, at this point in their careers and lives, we couldn't be more proud to acknowledge their contributions to the St. Louis community, the area workforce, and the UMSL community. It is inspiring, and it is humbling to think that our future distinguished alumni are out there, already making it happen, as UMSL students, they are already putting their futures into motion. We know UMSL students are resourceful, resilient, practical, and inventive. Let's hear about how just some of them have made the best of their situations when their lives were disrupted by the COVID pandemic. The stories keep coming in of UMSL students, faculty, and staff, all figuring out how to do what they do virtually. When the COVID-19 pandemic forced almost everything to shut down, UMSL shifted into gear. Or rather, UMSL shifted gears. No one was unaffected, least of all UMSL nursing students. During the pandemic, nursing students completing their required clinical hours were facing a new challenge. Hospitals and clinics limited the number of visitors, effectively narrowing clinical training opportunities. UMSL nursing faculty started thinking about how their students could gain experience virtually anywhere. Among many inventive programs, UMSL nursing students began working in partnership with Next Generation Logistics to screen the health of Amazon delivery drivers, educating them on symptoms of the pandemic and best practices to keep themselves and those around them healthy and safe. This pivot to an alternative workplace and opportunity to earn critical skills and hours towards graduation meant they could stay on track to join the workforce in a field where they are critically in demand. Faculty weren't the only ones looking out for UMSL students. One of UMSL's valued community partners is Burns & McDonnell, a full-service engineering, architecture, construction, environmental, and consulting solutions firm. For the past few years, they've hired summer interns. However, the COVID-19 pandemic brought on many challenges. After deciding that the internship program must continue, we faced the huge dilemma of determining how to provide a meaningful job experience that encompassed the Burns and Mac culture virtually. Relationships are the foundation that makes Burns and Mac successful. So that is what we built the virtual program around. Thanks to everyone going out of their way to make meaningful mentorship and internship possibilities for UMSL students. They say to every cloud, there's a silver lining. One of the cloud in this situation is the internet cloud. Laura Haug had already completed training for her internship at a St. Louis area marketing agency. Her tasks were office-based. A week into working at the office, they said, well, we're all going remotely now, including you, Laura. So I went to the remote setting. And at first it was kind of rocky, 
in the sense of me trying to understand what my levels of responsibility were. were. My skill set had not been presented yet to a lot of my coworkers because I really didn't have time to meet with them. And so there was kind of a moment where I would just reach out to people and say, hey, you know, I can do this. Do you need help with this? And then that's how I began to navigate through that. Let me know what you need and I'll figure out a way to do it. And that is really how it began. What did she do? She took the initiative. She reached out. She didn't wait for a supervisor's direction. She worked with her colleagues to create her own. And they extended her internship beyond the one semester, allowing her to stretch her skill set, make deeper connections, and build her resume. This summer, Wangoi Gathungu was looking ahead to her December 2020 graduation. She wanted to get some internship experience on her resume before hitting the job market. She couldn't find the internship she wanted to apply for in the St. Louis area, when she realized that working remotely meant exactly that. She should think more remote. Everything is pretty much remote and virtual at this point, so I'm just like, it's probably not even going to be that hard. Um, but let me just see. Let me just see what's out there. So I just like started looking in general at like major cities that were offering virtual remote internships that were 100% remote and 100% virtual because I don't need um, my supervisor emailing me, hey, come to the office and in my internships in Chicago. She applied and opened opportunities for herself in other cities. Now she's got two internships in Houston. As a student athlete, Michael Brothers suddenly had a lot more time on his hands than usual, but he reached out to someone he knows who works in his field deciding to turn the downtime into a positive. As a supply chain major, um, learning about his operations was very interesting and tied closely to my studies. So when I called offering help, they were very ecstatic. This company works for Amazon and they distribute a lot of products. So they were very busy during this time with everybody doing online shopping. I also called up to my internship uh, at Alios that I recently accepted and asked them if I was able to move on my start date from the beginning of June to the beginning of May. Thankfully, they were allowed, they allowed me to do so, and I was able to get a head start on that and gain more of that experience. Um, so students can succeed virtually anywhere. That's a consistent pattern that I have been able to see because I'm always, most of the time, I'm in virtual classes, and so you meet a variety of people with different backgrounds of all different ages, of all different walks of life. And that was something that I was particularly drawn to when I first joined UMSL. There was just so much diversity and diverse thinking and all these different people that you could connect with. Just that environment, it's definitely an environment for growth. UMSL students succeed virtually anywhere. I know so many of us can recall our own days as a college student. Many of you were here at UMSL. I can hardly imagine how we would have handled the drastic upheaval that we all did earlier this year. UMSL students experienced the extreme disruption to their lives and more. When the pandemic hit, so did the job market and especially the part-time jobs students rely on to pay their bills through school. Many don't have savings for tuition bills. Scholarships are critical. We can help these UMSL students who are studying with the end goal of moving from lower paying positions and into a steady profession. If we lift them up now, during these dark times, we will all be better for it in the future. You can be the silver lining 
for someone. I have the great pleasure of reading thank you notes from our scholarship recipients. It's truly one of the best perks of my job. And what strikes me above all is that right alongside the student's expression of sincere gratitude is their promise to pay it forward. That's what your support does. It boosts students' self-esteem and inspires them to do the same for those who come next. I'm willing to bet there are lots of you watching tonight who wrote a similar thank you note. And you are here because you know firsthand the experience of someone you've never met supporting your higher education, who said, I know you can do this. And now, as you do your part, we can't thank you enough. It's about all of you. We just facilitate the process. Thanks to Burns and McDonald for participating in this video and for helping to transform the lives of our students. It is support like this from the community that keeps us going. With your help and generosity, we are pleased to announce the groundbreaking of a new nursing simulation lab this November. The renovation and expansion of the Nursing Learning Resource and Simulation Center will allow UMSL to increase our BSN program enrollment by 20%, allowing us to graduate 40 additional students each year once the renovation is complete. As we heard in the video, with the COVID-19 pandemic, hospitals and other clinical partners have had to limit student learning experiences in their facilities. Obviously, plans for the facility were in the works long before the pandemic, but these expanded simulation facilities will allow our nursing students greater opportunities to work with our exceptional faculty to practice in-depth scenarios like providing care to highly infectious patients, learning the protocol around PPE, and activating emergency response plans before they graduate and join the workforce. We hope you're able to join us virtually for this exciting event. You can register online. Thank you to those who have already donated to tonight's event. You all are an incredible group. You may have seen earlier this year the article in the St. Louis Business Journal with our announcement of the 21% jump in philanthropic giving over the previous year. We owe a huge thanks to the George and Melissa Paz Foundation for contributing a record $4 million for scholarships. Last year, because of you, we raised more than $21 million in gifts, matching gifts and pledges. You help us succeed because you know an investment in UMSL is an investment in the people of the St. Louis area. On that note, I would like to recognize the commitment of our Pierre Laclede Society donors. The Pierre Laclede Society is a way for us to express gratitude to our loyal and consistent donors who commit $1,000 or more each year. Their philanthropic support allows for key investments across campus, including scholarships. In normal circumstances, we would ask the members of the Pierre Laclede Society, wearing their signature gold ribbons, to stand in the audience for our recognition. Now, we won't make you stand up in your own living rooms if you don't want, or maybe you do. In either case, know that we extend our deepest gratitude. Sharon Finolio is among the steadfast stewards of your generosity. Sharon, Associate Vice Chancellor for University Advancement, has been in the role since March and has been with UMSL for three years. We look forward to congratulating Sharon when she joins the ranks of UMSL alumni when she completes her MBA this December. Sharon? Thank you, Paul. The 1963 Society, one of our cornerstone giving societies, commemorates the year of UMSL's founding and acknowledges donors who have invested in the university's future through their planned gifts. Such gifts create a legacy which shapes the future of our students and sustains our institution. The city of St. Louis recognizes Auguste Chateau as a founding figure whose legacy was instrumental in preparing our region for a bright and prosperous future. Through the Auguste Chateau Society, UMSL honors those who have given generously to prepare the university, but more importantly, our students, for an equally bright and prosperous future. 
This group of valued philanthropists allows UMSL to provide transformative education through their individual commitments of $100,000 or more in their lifetime. What an enormous responsibility to be entrusted as stewards of these incredible gifts from so many remarkable individuals and organizations within both of these societies. We are extraordinarily grateful that we have your trust. It is truly a privilege and honor. To those of you in the 1963 Society and Auguste Chateau Society, from all of us here at UMSOL, to you and your homes, we extend our deepest gratitude. For those donors entering or advancing to a new milestone in these societies, we'd like to take a few moments to recognize and celebrate your extraordinary philanthropy during this past year. We're thrilled to welcome the following new members to the Auguste Chateau Society at the $100,000 level. Suzanne Fisher, Lyle and Peggy Gilbertson, the Honorable Anna Mayer Beck, Andrew and Lori O'Brien, James and Joan Sheely, the Millstone Foundation, and the Missouri Higher Education Loan Authority. We'd like to welcome the following new Auguste Chateau Society members at the $250,000 milestone and into our 1963 society. Connie Van Fleet. Florence Vogel. We'd like to welcome the following Auguste Chateau Society members as they reach the $250,000 giving milestone. Jane Gleason. The Great Rivers Confluence Foundation. Mercy Hospital St. Louis. Lama Saw. We'd like to welcome the following Auguste Chateau Society member to the $500,000 giving milestone. Anne and John McDonald. We'd like to recognize the following Auguste Chateau Society members as they reach the $5 million milestone. Emily Rao Pulitzer. The Paz Family Foundation. Thanks to all of you and congratulations. This isn't always the case, but this year it seems particularly fitting that one of the winners of the 2020 E. Desmond and Marianne Lee Award for Philanthropy is an UMSL graduate, someone who credits his success to his alma mater. Laura and Norm Eaker are simply stellar examples of those who benefit from their UMSL education and go on and reinvest their valuable time and financial resources with the university. Laura and Norman Eaker are the 2020 recipients of the E. Desmond and Marianne Lee Medal for Philanthropy due to their extraordinary and unwavering support of the University of Missouri-St. Louis. Norm, a 1978 graduate of the College of Business Administration, joined Edward Jones as an internal auditor in 1981, was named general partner in 1984, and retired as chief administrative officer in 2016. During his illustrious 35-year career at Edward Jones and since his retirement, Norm has been a tireless advocate for his alma mater in 2010, Norm delivered a heartfelt commencement address that encouraged graduates to be grateful and optimistic and to show appreciation to those who helped them in their journey. That same year, he was recognized as a distinguished alumnus at our annual Founders Dinner celebration. And in December 2016, he was awarded an honorary Doctor of Humane Letters for his lifelong commitment to UMSL. These accolades are well-deserved as Norm has selflessly volunteered his time and talent by serving as a Chancellor's Council member from 2008 through 2015, during which time he assisted in the strategy and acquisition of the Normandy Golf Course to ensure the historic course remained an asset for the community. 
Even now, Norm continues to volunteer on the Finance Committee of the Chancellor's Council, offering his expertise to our new Chancellor, Kristen Sobelik. In 2010, Laura and Norm established the Eaker Family Scholarship at UMSL, which supports students from North St. Louis. Since its creation, this award has in no small way ensured the success of 29 recipients, with 15 students having earned their degrees. The Eakers also made a campaign gift in support of the construction of Anheuser-Busch Hall, the College of Business Administration building that opened in 2017. Let's hear more from the Eakers. There's so many good institutions and so many choices on where to give your money. And UMSL is a great institution that provides access to many people just like me back in the early 70s. I was grateful for the quality education I got at UMSL, and I'm hoping I can share that with others. And UMSL being my alma mater, with the great access it provides is the reason we chose UMSL. And what do I get when I give to UMSL, whether it's through philanthropy or through my time and energy? I receive much more than I ever give. Uh, the joy and satisfaction of seeing this organization prosper and grow and provide access to quality education for so many in our community. When I was at Edward Jones, our number one source of recruits was UMSL. We hired more people from UMSL than any other place. We also had more general partners that were UMSL graduates than any other university in the country. So not only did I help UMSL, but by helping UMSL, they provided quality talent to Edward Jones, which is where I made my living and uh, I owe much to Edward Jones as well. I think there is no better role models than Des and Mary Ann Lee. They were gracious and generous givers and they afforded so many young people the opportunity to continue their education. And with that education, it makes them more competent. And the education is like a compass. It gives them direction in their lives so they can have rewarding careers and a fulfilling life and ultimately come back to UMSL and give to the next generation. And that's the magic complete the circle and begin the circle again. And I think that Des and Marianne led with that. So what does UMSL mean to me? It's all about access and quality education and opportunity. Uh, that is what UMSL provided me and that is what UMSL provides uh, the people today and hopefully for generations to come. Laura said it so beautifully. That's where the magic happens. Complete the circle. And while Norm and Laura certainly set the bar high with their financial support, this message is true for everyone, of almost any means. This year, we are so fortunate that Edward Jones stepped up to underwrite this event. With our expenses covered, we can dedicate every dollar this event brings in to the UMSL Strong Scholarship Fund. These scholarships are critical relief for our struggling students, those already enrolled and doing their best to keep pushing forward towards graduation. Right now, we are calling on you to help us help them. It is possible that you haven't given because your desire to make an impact is overwhelmingly larger than your capacity to give. Please know, it's not as much about the amount you give, it's about your participation your engagement. Just give what you can. Heck, just give the amount you didn't spend on a new outfit for a fancy night out. Thanks again for being here with us tonight to celebrate the resilience and fortitude of UMSL students. They are the ones who find a way to get it done. UMSL students succeed virtually anywhere. We are grateful for the time and commitment you give as our UMSL community. This is how we transform lives. Thank you for joining us.